my pro line art of this is already done. That's because uh, this is the second time I tried to make this video. It's just my phone ran out of space. So yeah. Well, anyway, like I was saying, hate comments can't get to me. Like, I noticed that a lot of YouTubers that'll let their hate comments get to them end up with depression. Well, guess what, bitch? I already have it. So if you're trying to bully me into a depression, that ain't it, chief, because it ain't, it ain't working. However, if your intent is other purposes, like to run me off a pl platform, I ain't leaving. Because you know what? In the words of Ronnie Radke, don't give a fuck about you. You hear me talking, motherfucker. Fucker ain't a damn thing you can do. You're a bitch. You're a bitch. Don't make me pull the plug. Plug here. Talk back and you suck. So don't ask me what I do for. Like, seriously. Nobody cares about your opinion. Unless it is specifically asked for. Because I know I have a family that loves me. Well, anyway, besides that point. Today I'm taking part in the S.E. Hinton It's Over Party. So this video is directed at her. This is addressing S.E. Hinton's faults as an author. Slash idol. I don't know what you consider her. But she has some pretty big faults, that's for sure. The first thing I'm going to address is the way she treats her fans. And what I mean by the way she treats her fans is... I have a friend who went to a book signing, and let's see, it was three years ago, so 2017, well, I wouldn't consider them a friend, more like a person, mutual, um, I follow online, well, anyway, I have a mutual that went to an S.E. Hinton book signing in 2017. This person, I'm not going to give away their username on Instagram because I don't need any targeted harass harassment sent at them because they're the per person who started this Essie Hinton is over party. Well, basically, they told her, oh, I dress like a greaser for you. And Essie Hinton basically, like, rolled her eyes, took a picture, and didn't even hand the book back to her. What she ended up doing was handed the book to someone else. We gave it back to that certain mutual. Yeah, that, that that's a complete dick move. Mrs. Hinton, I understand if you're trying to get the outsiders out of your past, but that's like your most popular book. I understand if it's like Oasis with Wonderwall, but that book probably won you awards you were you wouldn't even fathom winning. So, I want you to seriously consider all this stuff that I'm about to say. If you somehow end up finding this video, because there are, like, multiple people taking part in this. He hinting his over party. But basically, the next point I want to cover is the way she treats her fans on Twitter. Like, I am a stolen cold bitch is not an answer to a serious question about why you killed a character off. Like... 
that may be your personal answer because you're not happy with yourself for killing this character off. But that's not the answer that person was looking for. You know it. I know it. So stop pretending you don't know. Another thing I want to address is on her Twitter is I don't know if y'all heard about this, but someone asked the question was Johnny K meant to be a Native American because it would make sense because Oklahoma at the time was like I think it still is a reservation for like Native Americans. I, I don't know, don't quote me on that. I'm not from Oklahoma. I'm not an Oklahoman. So, if that's wrong, Oklahomans, correct me. Basically, That's what Essie Hinton has been doing. Besides, uh, there are plenty of other times where people have asked questions. And her response to it is not a response to a question. It'll be like, oh, I'm a stone cold bitch. That's why I did it. Or like. Or like. That Native American question. I, I just realized I never finished my thought on it. Her answer to that was, Ralph Macchio is Italian. Ralph didn't even come into the picture when he wrote the book. He was probably just a kid. <laughs> I know Rob Lowe was only like, what, a couple of years old in 1966? So, think Ralph Macchio is younger than him? So if Rob Lowe's not even old enough to be considered to be an actor for the movie. If Ralph Macchio's younger. What the heck does he have to do with the book? No hate to you, Ralph. It's just. It's just I thought I'd share this because, like, it needs to be out in the open. Someone who treats their fans like this is not a good person. No matter what their fans may say, oh, that's just how she treats us. It don't matter. I hope all you other Outsiders fans who are supporting SE, like, most of us, us and Essie Hinton is over party are still doing. We're just trying to get her to see her faults and hopefully change her ways. If you guys are still supporting her, that that's fine and dandy, but you should be realizing how the heck she's treating you. Because, like... Has Rob Lowe ever treated us like that? Has any of the other actors ever treated us like that? Says Patrick Swayze because he died before most of us were born. Or before most of us even read the book. That's what I meant. Is that how Patrick Swayze would have treated us? Unless they've been known to attack fans in the past, which Tom Cruise literally just surprised his two biggest fans. I seriously doubt that's how they treat us. That movie jump started their careers. Like, 
Ralph Macchio was Johnny Cade before he was ever Daniel Ru LaRusso, so... I doubt he'd be treating us like this. I doubt any of the other actors will be treating us like this. However, when you take into consideration that she might just, menopause might have taken a toll on her behavior. A lot of old people are bitter. Like, I live with my grandparents and not once in my life have they been bitter. Sure, they let me do stuff I can't, or they don't let me do stuff I normally do if it, if it weren't for me, like if it were for my parents, but my behavior is not up to them because I do not live with them. people especially idols are meant to be there for their fans like RDJ I don't think he was a dick to his fans ever and he was addicted to drugs so someone who's a druggie treats the fans better than you treat the fans that's saying a lot No hate to you, RDJ. I still love you. Blah, blah, blah. It's just, I needed to pull you up as an example because I don't know about any other actor that was addicted to drugs, to my knowledge. So thank you for, for being that example. So it's, it's not like you're a movie actor. It's not like you've done anything other than write books in your life. So I'd get it if it were like a horrible quality movie that you wanted to forget about. But that's not the case. The, the actors in that movie got hired for roles because of that movie. So therefore, you can't argue, oh, it was a bad book. It should have never been made into a movie. Bitch, I'm pretty sure you won a Pulitzer Prize for it. So, so stop treating your fans who found you through the Outsiders like dirt. Because all that's ever going to do is push them to hate the Outsiders, push them to hate you, and... You won't have any more supporters anymore. Because like 99.9% .9 of your supporters found you via the outsiders. Like, sure there's that point too that may have found you through like Rumblefish. Then they watched The Outsiders because they saw Matt Dillon and they liked him. Or at least I think it's Rumble Fish. It might have been Tex. I don't know. My point is, 
You can't just keep on treating people like shit who found you through the outsiders. Because that's a dick move. And like Stevie T has always said, you're a dick to your fans, you deserve a fan to your dicks. Whatever that means, <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> like, honestly. Why would you even want to try and get rid of the outsiders in the first place? Is it because it's taught in school? Is it because it's required curriculum, so you find it boring? Like, seriously, if us fans could get to the root of your problem with the outsiders... We could probably change your view on that. Because we grew to love the book and the characters and heck even the actors because of it. So whatever you see wrong with it, just tell us. We'll help you find how that can be a good thing. Is it because it's loved by all? Like, is it because your no novel, I think, won a Pulitzer Prize? Hold on, let me really quickly look this up. It won a Margaret Edwards Award. I don't know what this thing is, so let me... The Margaret A. Edwards Award is an American Library Association Literary Award that annually recognizes an author in a specific body of his or her work for significant and lasting contra con con contribution to young adult literature. You won this award. Yet, for some reason, you're still salty because the book that helped you win it exists? Or is it the movie? Because that ended up better than the book in ways because it's visual and most people won't sit their ass down to read a book. I'm sorry, but it's true. If that's your brand, sorry. Like, seriously, if you could just tell us fans what in the hell is wrong with the outsiders. We will fix that for you. Okay, the next point I want to bring up, actually, is the way she treats the other actors from the movie. So this excludes Matt Dillon, obviously, because Matt Dillon is like her golden child or something like that. I don't know, she just likes him a lot. I haven't seen any other accounts of this, but I've seen one specific account. Towards a Mr. Rob Lowe. Well, honestly, all the Outsiders fans, we're in love with you, Rob. <laughs> like, seriously, thank you for all that you do for us. Like, you're the best actor any fandom could have. So are the rest of you other Outsiders actors. I, I don't mean to undermine you. But you guys are like the best actors a fandom can have. And we're eternally grateful for you. But we are eternally sorry for the way S.E. Hinton attacked you. Like, when Rob Lowe came out, like, talking about living conditions on the outsiders, because they had, like, asked them to, like, uh, live how a poor person would live in order to get in, like, the character's headspace or whatever.
Rob Lowe said it was like scary or some shit like that. I don't remember exactly what he said because I didn't really read the article. All I know is that Essie Hinton replied to it and he's like, and she's like, well, maybe you should ask to play a social if you're so scared of lower income people. Bitch, you're scared of lower income people. You're scared of the outsiders fandom, which is mainly a bunch of 14 or 15, 12, 13 year olds, a bunch of young teenagers who are either in the seventh or eighth grade who had just read the book. You don't like us. Hence, you're scared of us. Gen Z can smell fear. <laughs> and it is prevalent on you. Like, seriously. Mrs. Sinton, I, I understand if it's just really weird that, about, that you're like only fans or. And I don't mean your only fans. I, I know you don't have that. But like your only fans are a bunch of kids. Or there could be adults who still like the outsiders. I don't know. But it's weird that your only fans are like kids. I know. I understand how strange that is. It's like it's like the 14 year olds who put stuff out on TikTok. Who dress skankly, might I add, who have, like, old men coming in their videos. Like, I get that strange. But, like, it's the demographic you've been given. It's a young adult novel. Young adults are gonna like it. It's a coming-of-age novel. Teens are gonna like it. If you didn't want so many kids in your fandom, you maybe should have gone with a different genre. Hmm. But that's not what I'm supposed to be talking about right now. I'm supposed to be talking about how she treated Rob Lowe. Like... I, I don't know if he knows she did this, but she did do this. And it's honestly problematic. Like, a million people say your fave is problematic, but it's horrible when you have to say my fave is problematic. We don't want to be having to say that anymore. Like, seriously. It's embarrassing. <laughs> so if you could pretty please stop being such a problematic bitch. Maybe we'd ha we'd get to stop saying that. Like, seriously, where's your publicist on your social media, too? Like, she's coming after these people public publicly on Twitter. Where's your publicist that's supposed to be making you look good and, you know, not like a total dick? Where is this person? Non-existent? Uh -uh, okay. I don't mind uh, you not having a publicist. Like, that's the least of my concerns. Like, but you should totally get one, by the way. By the way, um, I'm more concerned about the way you treat your fans because, like, that's obviously very problematic.
another fault of hers I want to address is the fact that she threatened to sue someone just for the heck of it. I forgot the details of it exactly, but I do know she threatened to sue someone for the heck of it. Like, there was no reason to sue this person whatsoever, and S.C. E. Hinton decided to be like, Oh, a person, I, I can freely sue them, even though they probably make way less than me, and I'm gonna end up the victor, because I can hire the better lawyer, because I make money. Like, bitch, you don't see a problem with that? You don't? Because... Me and a million other people could probably point out exactly what's wrong with that. <laughs> and that is that, um, lower income people can't control their lower income unless they get a better job, which a lot of the times they can't because they couldn't afford to go to college. So therefore, you can't expect them to just have a lawyer that's ready to be at their side at the drop of a hat. It takes months to get a lawyer. Like, especially if you're going against someone as big as, let's say, McDonald's. reason to fight McDonald's. Like, you can't just be willy-nilly awake. This person did this, blah, blah, blah. Most people do not have a lawyer at the drop of a hat. So, Essie, there are your faults. You really do not want to bring this Essie Hinton as over party back next year. So, please, please, please consider these faults. And change your ways, woman. Like, I know this is, like, kind of a short video. But, this is more for Essie Hinton and for the people who don't realize she is toxic. Against the outsiders, like. This is more for them. If you realize her faults... This video is less for you, but congratulations that uh, you have eyes you can you you can read. Like that's pretty amazing because most people can't like they'll be willing to back up their fave at the drop of a hat. But like I hate <laughs> that as he hand stands do that. Like early. We have no reason to do that, like She's a dick to people. She's a dick to us. Like, seriously, what's our reasoning for that? Like, now this message is for us. Us Outsiders fans. You can continue to support her. Sure, that's all fine and dandy. But just don't say she's not problematic, because she is. Like, seriously. Who just gets ready to sue someone? Out of nowhere. Oh, also, she threatened to... I think she threatened to sue him. But there was this book about a trans person who changed their name to Pony legally. I think legally. I, I don't know. I've never read the book. I don't even know if it's out yet. But uh, she was like, Oh, I, I own the trademark to stay old in Pony Boy. Like, bitch, no you don't. Nobody can trademark stay gold. Like, that's that's a phrase from Robert Frost phone. So if anybody can trademark that. Or at least I think it's... No, it's a phrase that was spawned from Robert Frost poem. So if anybody can trademark that, it's Mr. Frost himself. Not you. Definitely not you.
And seeing as Robert Frost let you use his poem in your book without suing your ass, unless he was dead by the time he wrote it, you shouldn't be, like, threatening to sue people. You know you use this you use copyright material without permission. We both know that. We both know that you used Robert Frost's poem, that Robert Frost's poem, without permission, because why would you ask for permission? In your mind, you're above everybody, so why would you ask for permission? To use a poem that probably has a copyright on it. You're lucky he didn't sue your ass over that. Or his people didn't sue your ass over that. Or his family didn't sue your ass over that. Because that's his poem. He wrote it. Not you. It's a Robert Frost poem. Not an original S.E. Hinton. It's a Robert Frost So yeah, that's it for today's video, guys. I know this one is kind of like shorter than my last one was, but that's because like, I don't even remember what my last one was about. Oh yeah, TikTok. That's because there's less points in this one than there was in TikTok because um, you got to see my full process except for my sketch and highlights because it had like no tip there. Like, I showed you my flat colors because... Well, it's just, like, I don't know why, but I find it, like, relaxing to watch somebody put flat colors on a painting. Like, that's why I watch traditional art. It's not because I do traditional art, but because it's, like, relaxing to watch them put flat colors on something. Like, anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for considering all the above points. I love you guys. <sighs> Goodbye. And I hope Essie Hinton sees the error of her ways. Otherwise, we're going to have to bring this back next year. And if she goes even more ballistic on Twitter, y'all let me know. I will bring up more points. Goodbye.